Ten years after the adoption of the African Youth Charter in Banjul, the Gambian capital was the focal point of the youth of the continent to assess the implementation of the charter adopted by the Conference of Heads of State and Governments of the African Union here in Banjul. If visible headways were noted, many challenges still remain to be addressed regarding youth issues. A fringe representing nearly 75% of the total African population, nearly 40% of whom being between 15 and 35 years. A balance finally qualified as mixed or not, so bright by the different stakeholders to the meeting for Banjul Plus 10. Among them, UNFPA, the United Nations Population Fund, UNESCO and national policymakers. Bonjour Plus 10 est une rencontre très importante euh, et ceci pour plusieurs raisons. Banjul Plus 10 is an important meeting. Not only the youth and the member countries will do stock taking of what has been done since Banjul, a study funded by UNFPA for the implementation of Banjul helped identify that there are still several issues to be addressed regarding the youth. It looks like since 10 years, nothing has been done with respect to the youth, and Banjul Plus 10 is still more important because it is a meeting which is convened at a time when the heads of state and the African populations have just decided the implementation of Agenda 2063, which is the agenda of the African Union for the well-being of its populations, but also for the development of the continent. Pour le développement du continent. The African Youth Charter is a political and legal document that provides policy framework providing guidance to unleash the potential of young people for the development at the national, regional and continental levels. However, the implementation of the said charter faces a lack of resources to enable it to support and fund programs for young people. C'est un bilan, euh, j'allais dire, euh, mitigé. This is a mixed balance. On the one hand, the African Youth Charter is one of the instruments of the African Union which has been ratified by the largest number of countries and almost in no time. But I should say that this is a rather unsatisfactory balance if you notice that only 38 out of 54 countries have ratified it, which is almost nothing. Second thing, like we heard this afternoon, only 16 out of the 54 countries have been the object of reports to highlight the progress made. The roadmap after the Banjul Plus 10 Forum will strengthen the momentum towards the implementation of the African Youth Charter. To achieve this, the signing of the Charter by all member countries of the African Union becomes an emergency. To date, in fact, 42 out of 54 countries signed the Charter and only 38 have ratified it. Twelve years later, I don't think we have been up to par. We have not been up to par because most of the young people are still unemployed. Young people are facing tough challenges in Africa, but it is also important to celebrate some accomplishments by the youth in terms of entrepreneurship and education. But it is equally important to remind that next year, African Union will focus on the youth. But what is the African youth asking for? The African youth is asking for the African Union to set up an African fund for the youth, an African fund for the development of the youth. I know a lot of, of course, progress has been made in Africa, but as I listen to previous speakers, there are even deep challenges. For example, I'm told here out of 54 African countries, 10 have not even signed nor ratified the charter, and that is serious. And I think I've been given a message which will be communicated to His Excellency the President, Chef Professor Al Haji Dr. Ajay Jajami, and through him, of course, his colleagues, the African colleagues, that perhaps during the next summit they should raise it as an issue, as an agenda issue. And I know, of course, you are going to also add it in your, in your, the outcome of this meeting is going to be presented to the summit of the next summit of the African Union. Banjul Plus 10 took place in a particular context marked by the decision of African heads of state to roll out Agenda 2063. 
This agenda is set by the African Union and its aim is to strengthen the construction and development of the continent through the empowerment of youth and women. The African Youth Charter, developed under the leadership of the Commission of the African Union, is a major guide for youth development in Africa. Les États ont l'obligation d'honorer leurs engagements par rapport à cette charte. It is mandatory for the states to respect their commitments regarding this charter, and I think that next year African leaders have to show their willingness to invest in the youth. So next year, the point will not be just to meet at the African Union and sign papers once again, but instead to meet and come up with some actions. For instance. States will be able to say, well, I want to invest this much in my youth. Or they will say, we can invest that much in the African Youth Development Fund. At the African Union, there is not a special fund for the youth. When we say investing in the youth in Africa, there are countries without a ministry of youth. But in these countries, there is a program, a youth policy. Here, when you have a youth ministry, its main role is not that. Its main role is to serve as itching powder within the government so it can tell the president and vice president to make sure that in each ministry, young people are taken care of. This is the biggest role of the Minister of Youth. Make sure that each of his colleagues, Minister of Finance, Minister of Education, etc., that they have to plan to leave room for the youth in their ministries. In Africa, issues relating to reproductive health of adolescents and young people are a theme of great acuity, particularly in West and Central Africa. However, they are often sidelined in public health policy. It is to correct these shortcomings that the French Muskoka Fund was created in 2011 by the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Development in partnership with four United Nations agencies the World Health Organization, UNICEF, the United Nations Population Fund, and UN Women. The key message is to work for the reduction of early pregnancies, the elimination of early marriages, but also make sure that health centers are more appealing for the youth. Of course, this is a big concept, but it is meant to make the youth more comfortable in the health centers so they can go there to speak, get information on the health services offered in these centers, take ownership of these centers as public facilities to which they can go comfortably. For this, there are several options. This is what is called creating spaces for the youth with sometimes entrances different from the usual entrances in centers and also the ability to conduct activities for the youth in the communities. Also establish a link with the school. The spaces the community has set up for the youth and the health center should be a space where the youth should feel comfortable to go to and get information, services and products including contraceptive products. We record cases of early marriages in the country, especially in remote areas, which is really sad if you know that the commitment of the youth is something we heavily rely on to pave the way to our countries, so they can achieve the objectives of 2033 and 2030. There are still cases of early marriages and their ongoing activities in this regard. Overall, with respect to the approach of the theme at UNFPA Benin, there are projects underway like facilitating discussions with religious leaders. We also have a project to facilitate discussions between parents and students because we have noticed that this is something that may be a source of misunderstanding or may not promote open-mindedness or the acquisition of information by the youth. So we work in this regard. The youth also raise issues relating to reproductive health, access to services, access to contraceptive medicines, child marriages, early marriages, female genital mutilations, etc. These are issues facing young people here and there on the continent. We used to do awareness raising, but with the innovations we came up with the IT, there is a need for applications. We also have to set up listening and education centers for these young people so they can receive the information they need because the education is out there. 
We can no longer afford to get stuck to the old years when a 19-year-old girl did not even know about her career. The fund Muskoka is executed in 10 African countries and 80, representing about 205 million inhabitants and almost 900,000 deaths in under five children, 40% of whom being newborns. They include Benin, Burkina Faso, Ivory Coast, Guinea, Mali, Niger, Senegal, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Chad and Togo. These are the areas we are really working on. The strategic plan of our organization, which by the way I drafted while I was in New York, has a business model and this business model includes a dial which highlights the four areas we work on. One main area for poor countries like Africa's is service delivery. And at this level, access to FP services, early marriages, early pregnancies, HIV AIDS related issues and interventions in areas in which the physical capacities are not that important. We bring our support to these countries. In the Gambia, for example, if my figures are correct, the supply of products related to reproductive health comes from UNFPA. Just to say that, if UNFPA cannot answer the supply of these basic products, the Gambian population won't have that. So you see how important our presence in these countries is, and I only talked about one aspect, service delivery. And it is thanks to our action and our advocacy that the demographic dividend was integrated in the Agenda 2030. The Banjul meeting will serve as a continental platform for a collective awareness raising on the stakes related to the demographic dividend, a guarantee of progress and empowerment of African youth. Advocacy was made in this direction to encourage governments to accelerate reforms to dedicate a better place for the youth in the Agendas 2030, the UN Sustainable Development Goals and those of the 2063 horizon of the African Union.